What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Not For The Week Of Heart. Lately on social media, we've seen more and more comments that say that God is neither a Republican nor a Democrat. Now usually they are saying this in regard to this past election and how God can use either person, so it really didn't matter who won the election because God is ultimately in control. I found it interesting that the majority of people I saw commenting that specific phrase or statement was in favor of a candidate that seemed to only push evil. Now with that said, just looking at the statement at face value, their comment is is quite accurate. God is neither a Democrat nor a Republican. He is not a socialist, communist, dictator, or libertarian. God is not labeled by a man-made government or man-made parties. But I want to be clear God does have a government. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 through 7 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We can see the mention of a government or kingdom again in John chapter 18, 33 through 38. It says, So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or do others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? This now begs the question that if God has a government or a kingdom, and he's neither a Republican nor a Democrat, what does his government or kingdom look like? Well, God's government and his kingdom is based on the morality of God, meaning his government, his kingdom is without flaw. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4, the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. And Psalms 9 verse 7 through 8, but the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for justice, and he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the people with uprightness. So then, what are the basics of God's government? Well, this is where we pull from Scripture to know the heart and desire of God. Why? Because all Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. So then what does scripture say about God's heart and his desire? Well, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 25, Paul paints out a great picture separating what is works of the flesh and what is the fruit of the spirit. He says, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. In this same letter to the Galatians, only a few sentences earlier, Paul declares 
that the entire law and prophets are summed up in one thing, love. Galatians chapter 5 verse 14. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus teaches the same idea in Matthew 22 verses 35 through 40. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In other words, love is the key to understanding God's will and his desire. Now, many of those things that Paul warns us to flee from because they will keep us out of the kingdom of heaven are things that society has approved of and, and has deemed a normal part of our lives. In fact, to go against some of these sins, our society has deemed to be hatred and bigotry. So why would we vote based on these standards when our society's standards are much different than the standards of the Bible? Well, according to Jesus himself, we humanity, all of us, we're all flawed by sin and none of us are good. Mark chapter 10 verse 18. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. For more on why Jesus asked this question, check out our video, The Rich Young Ruler, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category. Now, because none of us are good and we are all flawed, it makes sense why Paul describes God's wisdom and man's wisdom like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. God explains it this way in Isaiah 55, verses 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. We can't depend on our own understanding and our own wisdom for what is right and wrong, as Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6 warns us, because we aren't perfect. We're flawed. We aren't good. We are born with sin. We're born corrupt. We can't depend on our own wisdom and understanding, especially when our own wisdom and understanding is so much lower than the God of all creation. So let's just sum this up for you guys real quick. God is neither a Democrat nor a Republican. God is above our man-made political parties because his thoughts are above our thoughts. He understands what we cannot and he has wisdom where we are simply ignorant. Therefore, to lean on our own understanding and wisdom would lead us to our own demise. This is why when we vote, we can't vote based strictly on political party, whether Democrat or Republican. It's very dangerous because we then overlook the policies and the platforms that these men and women are running on. As George Washington is quoted as saying, the worst enemy of government is loyalty to party over nation. So when you consider the candidates, don't look simply at their political party. Look at their policies. Look at their history and what they have done in the past. Look at their speeches and the promises that they have made. Then compare it to the law of God and ask, does this line up with the heart, the desire of God? Or does it line up with the heart and the desire of man? This is how all Christians should vote. With the heart and desire of God on their mind as a guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.